I grew up in Seattle, Washington with a family. I had eight brothers, and my dad said I was the son he always wanted, which was an embarrassment to me. But the reason he said that is because I was so competitive, and we used to go down and collect pop bottles. We'd sit on the sidewalk, and I would say, you know, someday I'm going to own all the candy in the world. And my brother would say, well, someday I'm going to own your world. And I'd be like, oh, I hate that, you know. And I remember my mom put us on her lap and said, you kids don't have to live like this. You go out and be somebody. You know, just grab a hold of this world and just go do it. And you can do anything you want in your life. I think about it and it just isn't funny. The way I used to live, I was chasing the money. I had the cars and the big, big house. I wore the gold watch. I had figured the whole thing out. Come on, didn't everybody in their 20s go to college? Weren't we becoming? Right? And then when you're our 30s, well, what happened in our 30s? We're like, I just haven't, people just haven't discovered me for my real talents because I know if they did, I'd make about $100,000 a year. Come on, is this true? And then we moved on to our 40s and it was like, oh crap, I gotta find oh, something. I traveled the world out on every plane. I was wheeling and dealing and playing the same game. Searching for a little peace of mind. I was looking for love. Oh, I never thought I'd find. What happened was, is, is we went out with this passion, and all of us were successful in our own fields. I went on to be a coach, and I coached with the women's basketball at Brigham Young University. And I met this man who was just so amazing. He got drafted by the Pirates. He was like a total stud. I imagined myself being a baseball player's wife. You know, I was going to be traveling. I was going to be shopping. I was going to be on the third baseline, you know, and as he hit his grand slam, you know, he was going to round third base, you know, and he was going to tip his cap at me, and I was going to be like, that's my babe, and uh, it never happened. I gave it all up to drive a beat of a van and get the sweetest loving from my man. I started looking at our lives, my husband and I, and he didn't make it in baseball, and he ended up being a Wonder Bread driver, we called him Mr. Wonder Buns, you know? You know, what the heck happened to our lives? He got up every morning at 3.30 in the morning, got home at noon every day, and, um, you know, never missed a day of work. In the meantime, we had three boys. I don't even know how we had them because we never saw each other. You know what I mean? I even remember taking my little boys into the gym and showing them the banners that we won and showing them the rings, the, the championship rings, and saying, you know what, look at that. Your mommy won that. She's got it going on. Look what she did. Are you so proud of your mommy? And they'd look at me and they'd go, yeah, mommy, that's awesome. And I started realizing that my ego was totally driving me because here I was making about $25,000 a year is all. And I was spending most of my time with the people I love the least and spending the least amount of time with the people I love the most. I don't vacation on a yacht in Key Largo. Got $22 in my bank at Wells Fargo. For two years, we lived in a, part, a place that was really our, our rental home that we had turned into a rental home. And we really struggled. And I don't know if any of you have ever felt pain in your life, but I felt so much pain that I started thinking about how big my problem was. And people say, what are you doing? And I was like, I'm thinking about my problem. I need to think about it. What happened was, I just let it all go. I had nothing to lose. And I ask you, what do you have to lose? What are you hanging on to so tight that you couldn't get involved in a company that helps solve problems? We are out at Turtle Bay golfing at one of the most incredible golf spots in the world because of Zengo. Think about the top 10 problems in your life today. How many of them have to do with finances? How many of them have to do with health? The difference between you and I is a year maybe, a year and a half. I made a $30 check my first month, and I wish I would have kept it, but I needed it really bad. I couldn't even get a bank account. They wouldn't give me a bank account, and every month I came back with my check as it got bigger. I'm saying, you're going to wish. I would just go to bank one, their bank, and cash it. I'm saying, you're going to wish you gave me a bank account. And every month, come back with a new check. You're going to wish, you're going to wish, you're going to wish. And I got a bank account. My parents had a really hard life. In their 50s, they lost their business, and they're in their 70s now. And they lived in trailer houses. They've, they've really struggled, and they had no retirement. They had no insurance, no anything. And I told my mom and dad that I was going to do the best I could to be able to help them get out of the situation they're in. And what's really incredible is I went down to Arizona. I was able to go down and purchase a piece of land on the fifth hole of a golf course in Arizona. And we're going to start building just a beautiful home for them. And my parents are in tears. They've never had anything new. And I'm telling you what, I have never seen my mom skip like she did. Seven years old. It was scary, but it was really cool. It's something that I know would have never happened as I laid in bed feeling sorry for myself. So all I know is, is there are people that are going to watch other people be successful, and there are people that are going to go out and be participants and help success be in their own lives. And you choose which one you want to be. I like 
my life this way. It's a lot better having money, by the way.